I'm Dr. Ryla Hay. I practiced medicine in Pueblo from 1880 until 1904. I was the first woman physician from Pueblo to be hired as a consultant on the Colorado Insane Asylum. And I was the first woman doctor from Pueblo to be admitted to the Colorado Medical Society. My husband was the Reverend John Hay. He built Central Christian Church. You know, that beautiful brick church on the corner of 7th and Albany? And I was the mother of four children. You know, in my day, there was such a stringent social order. Why, the very idea of a woman physician was scandalous. A woman's place was in the home, subservient to a husband or father, or brothers. They said higher education was unhealthy for women. We said it was women in the home who took care of the sick and the injured. So our interest in medicine was only a natural extension of our feminine duties. And during wartime, it was women who cared for the wounded and dying soldiers. And that was the logic that cracked open the door for us in a male-dominated profession. In 1849, the first woman graduated from an American medical college. And those men were so upset we were there, they said, oh, you can't attend anatomy classes with us. That's just too offensive. So we had our separate classrooms. And after we received our degrees, they barred us from practicing in their hospitals and their clinics. So women physicians banded together and we opened our own medical <coughs> facilities. And by the 1890 census, there were 59 women doctors and surgeons right here in Colorado. And in Pueblo, there were nine of us practicing medicine. You know, this little black bag, it was my traveling office. And next to my stethoscope was a pistol. <laughs> yes, I made house calls in the dark of night, in the remote countryside, all by myself, horse and buggy. We treated everything from gunshot wounds to toothaches. Do you know if you live to be 50, half of you would be toothless? <laughs> oh, you're missing two or three. <laughs> and childbirth. Oh, that was a dangerous time for a woman and a baby. There were no antibiotics. And you know, we had opium to treat pain. Why, they even gave it to babies during teething. Now, you know, we understood the transmission of the disease. I had a microscope, and I understood contagious diseases. But there was only one way that we could prevent their spread. Quarantine. Whole families, entire blocks of people, sometimes neighborhoods, were shut up in their homes. No one could go in and no one could come out for weeks at a time. And if you broke quarantine, you were subject to arrest. I've seen four families wiped out by contagious disease. Oh, what a sorrowful, sorrowful time that was. But you know, there was one bright spot we could prevent smallpox. And that's how I spent a lot of my time, vaccinating my patients against that dreaded disease and teaching good hygiene practices. Wash your hands, cover your cough, and dispelling quack remedies. <laughs> like, if you have a sore throat, Take a piece of bacon and
and sprinkle it with black pepper and wrap it around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wanted to prevent tooth decay and preserve your teeth, every morning, rinse your mouth with urine. Oh. Ooh, oh. <laughs> you have no idea what we were up against. <laughs> You know, most women physicians were feminists, and we fought to improve the lives of women and children. You may have heard of Dr. Corwin. Well, the CF and I hired him to treat and take care of the steel workers and their families. And Dr. Corwin helped break down barriers because he hired women physicians. I remember in the early 1900s, he established a nursing school right there at Orwin Hospital. Thank you for letting me share the story of a woman physician.